Well, now you've heard um, who we are, who I am, and uh, why we're here. It's time to get to the basics. First of all, what is an au pair? Well, since you're here, you probably heard a thing or two about what an au pair is, but usually they are a young foreign person, most likely a woman, uh, who helps with housework and childcare in exchange for food, room, and some life. So who can be an au pair? Uh, first of all, um, the legal definition is anyone on a working holiday visa uh, coming to Australia for up to a year um, can become an au pair. So obviously they have to have permission to work. However, um, blah, 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 blah. who can be an au pair? Anyone on a working holiday visa, so subclass 417 or 462, coming to Australia for a year. Um, even though people on a working holiday visa are not supposed to work for more than six months for the same employer, for au pairs, however, it is easy to apply to stay with the same host family for 12 months. Beyond working holiday visa, students can also be an au pair, uh, but more on this later. So there are certain limitations, mainly hours um, that students have, um, but anyone on a student visa can become an au pair as well. We call them demi pairs, and obviously that broadens um, the selection of countries they can come from. So how does someone come on a working holiday visa to Australia? Well, first of all, they have to be between the age of 18 and 30 years of 30 years of age. Therefore, the definition of young people, um, usually not married, not children, and uh, they've never previously been to Australia on a working holiday visa. And they have to have enough savings to pay for their holiday. So the $5,000 that they come to Australia with is supposed to help them in case of emergency um, to either fly back or cover their medical expenses, uh, whatever happens, or they might not have a job for a while. So obviously they need to be able to provide for themselves. Um, and that money is, as I said, enough to travel. Um, other working holiday requirements or visa requirements are health insurance. So um, anyone on a working holiday visa needs to get their own private health insurance because they will not be covered by Medicare. Um, they need to make sure they are healthy. Um, so obviously questions around TB, etc., are asked. Um, character requirements. So obviously they ask questions about your criminal records. Um, also any um, charges against um, um, like against children, and um, in some countries they also require biometrics. A couple of countries uh, where working holiday visa holders um, come from, um, especially I just marked the ones that are interesting for au pairs. So a majority of au pairs come from Germany, France, um, Ireland, um, Italy, uh, a few from South Korea as well, but then also the Nordic countries like Norway, Sweden, and so on. Um, so 462, um, some people ask, what about the 462 visa? And I've mentioned it before. Um, there are many more countries that can come on a working holiday visa through the 462 subclass. Um, however, um, the, they have many more requirements that they have to meet, such as um, um, language um, requirements and um, education requirements and also um, the number of visas given are capped. So you can see, for example, for Argentina, it's two and a half thousand. Uh, for Peru, it's 1,500. And it goes down all the way to only 100 per year, like Turkey, for example. And they have to provide proof of functional e um, English and they may also require a letter to support um, from their uh, government. <laughs> 